Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Spider Cafe, a place for creepy crawly talk and micro photography. Today we're gonna be talking about praying mantids. The reason why I like keeping praying mantids is uh, pretty simple. They're beautiful. They Some of them can look very exotic. They have these huge eyes, so they look very intelligent, very alien-like. And they are really easy to photograph because they don't move a lot. In past year, I kept three different mantids. And I kept a ghost mantis, I kept spiny flower mantis, and currently we have a budwig mantis. And all three are a little different and all three of them have something in common. So let me start first where you should get your mantis. There is several places and I got mine from three different places and I'm going to recommend two of them. One of them is uh, mantisplace.com. It's a smaller place. I think it's run by one. They both actually run by like an individual person. Uh, really easy communication. She has some other interesting stuff. Go check out her website. The person's name is Rebecca. The second one is called, and I'm going through it fast because I'm trying to make this video under 10 minutes. So my wife who's working overtime doesn't have to spend too much time editing. So I apologize if I'm going through it fast. But those are, you know, things that you can easily check out online. The second place is Mantid Kingdom. I got my spiny flower mantis from them and I ordered one and he actually sent me two, which was really awesome. I recommend uh, getting them shipped overnight because it can come really exhausted and it's just they're not as hardy as adults when they are little nymphs. Uh, I remember when we got our spiny flower mantids, they were so tired that they couldn't climb on plastic at all. Initially I was afraid that they won't be able to climb in the enclosures that I built for them, but they started drinking water immediately from my hand and then uh, once I put them in and they kind of regained their energy, they were able to move around. How do I keep them? So nymphs I keep in small deli cups. Well, they don't have to be actually small. In deli cups that they have a mesh uh, lids like this. So they can actually hold on to them and they can climb on these. What I like to do is also I like to poke a hole in here and uh, just put like a, a piece of paper over it or something, you know, something non-sticky obviously, so, you know, they don't get stuck to it. And I use it as a feeding hole basically, so I don't have to constantly be opening it up and uh, spooking the mantis. So I usually just take out, you know, the whatever's covering the hole and put my feeders in and then I cover it. The adults I like to either keep in, if they don't need much humidity, because in the area where we live it's really dry, I keep them in this. this these are like a butterfly habitats. The front is uh, plastic, see-through, and the rest of it is uh, mesh, so a really good ventilation. And if they need more humidity, I keep them in exoterras with a, a mesh lid, so again, they can climb. And every time, you know, whether it's nymph or whether it's adult, I always give them a lot to climb on. And because, you know, this is basically how they live. And also, uh, when they molt, they, you know, hang upside down and they shed their skin, their old skin, and once they fully molted, they are really soft and for about a day they are completely vulnerable. They basically, you know, nothing's holding them together. If they would fall down, they would literally be just like a, you know, just like a splash. Nothing would be left of them. So they really need to have a good place where they can hang and they can molt. So enclosures with mesh lids and places to climb on are very important. Okay, feeding. I feed my nymphs and adults mostly flying insects. It's uh, one of the downsides of keeping mantids because, you know, keeping flies at home is not really not fun. So the nymphs, I feed fruit flies. You can order those at both places that I just mentioned. Also, you can probably have them at like your local pet store, even like the bigger chains have them. And there's two different fruit flies. So if you're just getting into the hobby, just know that there is a smaller and a larger fruit fly. So you know, just look it up and probably start with the smaller ones, move on to the larger ones. And as they grow, I start feeding them house flies and I move on to blue bottle flies. And um, all of those can again get at the places that I mentioned. I get mine from Mantis Place, Rebecca there. She has a really good shipping, really cheap. So uh, she's from, actually, I initially believe she was from California, but she's from somewhere else. So I was going to say the shipping doesn't take that long, but it doesn't take that long anyway. So. I order my flies from there and when they get fully adult, you know, they can eat a lot of different things. We actually, uh, I sometimes have um, hornworm caterpillars for some of my spiders and when they get like, they get big really fast basically and uh, it's like, I call it like a junk food for them, you know, they really fill them up. So sometimes I let basically, long story short, I let the caterpillars hatch and we would feed our ghost mantis. Oh, okay, my alarm. I'm already talking too long. I haven't even got to the uh, to the mantids yet. All right. 
So we, we fed one of my goats mantises the hatched moth. So that was really cool. I mean, it was huge. It was the size of uh, the mantis. But the mantis just was really hungry and just went for it and just wouldn't let the moth go. All right. So let me talk a little bit of species specific. And I think that's going to be it. Okay, ghost mantis. So these guys are known for their camouflage and Vicorel Shogun because they have a, the females have actually, we didn't know if it was going to be a female, but even the males have it. There's a strong sexual dimorphism between those, between males and females when it comes to ghost mantis. The males are a lot smaller and that was actually the same with the spiny flower mantis uh, that we keep. But we call her Shogun because she had like a little crown that looked almost like a, you know, Shogun helmet. And those come from Africa, and they, you can also find them in Southern Europe. They grow roughly to three inches. Their humidity is around 60% uh, from what I read. Uh, basically, what I do with all of my uh, mantids, I mist one side of their enclosure once a day. And if they in those exoterras enclosures, you know, you don't need substrate for mantids, but I usually like to keep their enclosure looking very natural, just like with my spiders. So I usually have a substrate there too. They are really clean insects. You don't need any cleanup crew like springtails or anything to clean up after them because they finish everything. They're really good eaters. They finish everything. Sometimes they leave like a wing or, you know, lag or something like that, but that's about it. Their temperature is around 80 degrees, which is easy uh, for us. That's basically the regular temperature that we have around uh, Southern California. And some people say these can be kept communal as sub-adults. Some even say as adults, if you give them enough space, they can be communal. Uh, I don't have experience with this. I have seen a lot of reports where people say that actually uh, they would eat each other, basically. So, you know, it's kind of up to you. And one interesting fact that I heard about them, because they can be kept communally, a lot of farmers would keep them as like uh, protection against pests. And especially they are known to be used in marijuana industry, uh, where people would keep them in their warehouses, basically to keep pests away. And last thing about ghost mantis is their appearance is incredible. And they are, I would call it a uh, beginner species. They are very forgiving. All right, so that's ghost mantis. Let's move on to the next. Okay, budwing mantis. So we got this mantis as adult. So I can't really tell you much about their care as uh, nymphs, uh, but I can give you a little quick breakdown on them. They are called budwing mantis because they have short wings, so they, the females don't fly. They are pretty big. They grow up to four inches, and they're a little different in a sense that they actually would chase their prey. They are not like other mantids where they would just wait until the prey gets close and then they would ambush it. They're actively going after the prey, which can be really fun to watch. And um, they like it a little bit on the drier side, but like I said, I usually just missed one side of the enclosure anyway. So like our female is in a big butterfly habitat, you know. So you know. Every day, every other day, I just spray the plastic side, and uh, that's about it. Or some plants in there. I actually even have uh, some live plants in there. That's about the budwing mantis. It's, it's a really easy, uh, I would say, beginner species. And um, again, we feed it flying uh, insects. That's what I usually do. Sometimes when we run out, or just you know to change it up a little bit, I uh, would give her a cockroach or cricket. You know really good eater and actually one thing to say about them this is the first time i would get attacked by a mantid and she would even do a threat pose at me it never happened to me before it would be i would just put my hand in there and just kind of like nudge them on my hand on my top of palm of my hand and they would just slowly move on and climb on my hand and i would just take them out and that would be it not with this girl she immediately gave me a threat pose i was able to nudge her on then she would bite me then we would take her out and she would just stay in a threat pose so they are pretty ballsy and pretty vicious hunters as well, and a beginner species, so I recommend. <laughs> okay, spiny flower mantis. I would say I have the most experience with these because we got two, and we had a male and a female, and I raised them from nymphs to adults. And they are beautiful. The great thing about them is they start out as black. Some people say it's because they mimic um, ants and ants are not very desired food for uh, a lot of predators in, uh, in nature. So they basically start out as black and then they turn into white with some uh, green coloring and they have a really beautiful wings that they sometimes expand to basically show their threat pose uh, to make themselves look bigger with them. They have a symbol on them that I would say maybe resembles an eye, you know, to uh, a predator. And uh, I wouldn't. I would say this is an intermediate species, and basically only because they like a little bit higher humidity. So uh, you need to miss them, you know, once, twice a day again. 
but I would say that's about it when it comes to difficulty. I didn't have any problem feeding them or anything like that. As a matter of fact, they were really good eaters. Uh, the female would sit on the edge of the lid. Uh, basically, like when I would have, uh, when she would be in a cup, she would be sitting right here. And uh, here would be the hole to feed there. But uh, also the cup was already kind of loose here where she was sitting. So I would just kind of like open it and I would just put the fly in and she would sometimes reach from the, uh, from the inside out and grab the fly on the outside. And she stayed there throughout the whole molt, basically for, I don't know how long it was at the time, but she would stay there the whole time and I would just like, you know, hand feed her. <laughs> so pretty amazing. And uh, these guys come from Sub-Saharan Africa. They don't grow very big. I would say two to three inches for the female and the male was slender, maybe two inches with a uh, long antenna. Again, sexual dimorphism was uh, pretty obvious and pretty visible. In summary, mantids are awesome. If you're into bugs, uh, I would definitely even maybe start with mantids because they are easy to keep. If you're into macro photography, they're fantastic because they don't move much. They look interesting. They do a lot of poses. After you feed them, they always clean themselves up and they do amazing poses. So I highly recommend mantids. And speaking of mantids, uh, some of you maybe follow us on Instagram or on Facebook and you've seen some of our announcement that we are making our t-shirts basically. I'm trying to put bugs in famous movies, you know, and like a, find like a scene or a poster from a famous movie and put a bug in it, either like a mantis or a spider because those are some of my favorites and mantids are really easy to post. So this is one of our first ones. It's based on Titanic, obviously, if you... Just for those who haven't seen it, because obviously everybody, everybody who's seen it knows. <laughs> and uh, we are pretty happy with the print. This was actually, we got, this, this was the cheapest one from all of the t-shirts. We had, we tried different quality from one printing company and we are pretty happy. So we are in the process of making our online store and we're going to be selling them. We have five designs right now. I'm working on a sixth one and uh, should be out hopefully by the end of this week. Who knows, this is probably gonna be out before this video because like I said, we are pretty busy. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to us. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe and notifications button. It means a lot to us and I hope to see you soon. All right, ciao.